Welcome to Property Nomads. Welcome to another episode with Mark Champ of Wolf Financial. Uh, plenty going on. Uh, just before we started recording this, uh, there was an article that came out to say that two-year fixed were the highest uh, rate for 15 years, but I've done a separate episode on that. But Mark, yeah, you were just saying that business is is picking up for you, so uh, which is great news. But uh, do, do divulge, because it sounds like it wasn't something you were expecting to happen. No, so in the at the start of June we had a, a bit of a lull, and uh, I was thinking, is this going to be the the onset of a, a barren period? But the last week and a half, we've had more inquiries in than I can remember. Probably, probably highest volume this year. A lot of it is refinancing, um, but we are seeing some development stuff as well. Um, we've actually uh, and. I've, forgot to mention to this uh, this to you uh, we've actually put a new development finance tool on our website so that's working really well we've partnered up with a company called Brickflow and uh, now you can go onto our website type in your development um, criteria so your purchase price your bill cost your legals GDV etc and then it'll come up with a list of between 20 and 40 lenders and their terms so you'll see the rate you'll see the fee see all these all these things um and then hopefully we can take that through so we've got that on our website and yeah i think people are taking advantage of it because it's a quick way of being able to get terms and verify projects and then they can see if it works and come into us and then we can try and um take the process forward so that that's been really good and that could be uh, one of the reasons why we're seeing more volume um but i think also what we're going to see is a lot of the high street lenders where they've been putting people on five-year fixed terms i think they're going to be coming off in the next few months and maybe a year um and that is that's going to mean refinances but it's going to cost people more money but if they get in early it'll be you know a cheaper rate hopefully for them yeah, fingers crossed. I mean, we've been saying, you know, Phil, uh, you know, we've been beating the same drum for for a while. And we said it at the start of the year, and I think probably even said it at the back end of of last year that what would happen is that the Bank of England would just keep increasing rates, increasing rates. My understanding is it normally takes twelve to eighteen months for those changes to then filter through into the you know the actual economy you know, for, for you and I, and, and they'll keep going until something breaks. And I'm, you know, I, I I'm more convinced than ever that that's going to happen sooner rather than later. But from what I see, is yeah, people that are coming out are off their off their fixed, uh, you know, five year fixed whatever they're on now, and. Um, Obviously, I'm not the broker, you are, but if I was in people's shoes, I'd be saying, well, actually, you know, that th- those rates keep going up. Maybe it is just worth biting the bullet and, and doing that now. I mean, that's that's what I would say. But uh... Yeah, and we are seeing that. We're seeing quite a few people break their early repayment charge and um, they are deciding to fix in now because they're seeing reports of, Six, seven, seven and a half percent. Um, personally, I don't think you'll get that high. But um, when the media reports these things, people do um, go for the worst case scenario a lot of the time. So, yeah, we're we're seeing a lot of people um, trying to get their house in order. Maybe they should have done it before, but um, anyway, it is what it is, and. I think there's also a lot of people just waiting for it to tip over the edge so that the cheaper value properties come on the market. Um, But I I was reading something today, one of the lenders put on uh, LinkedIn and they were talking about the, the actual problems in the market and are they actually that bad? And they pointed towards the level of capital in the market still. And there, there is, you know, lenders are still lending. It's it's more expensive, but they're still lending and there's not a shortage of funds. So they're saying, well, if there isn't that shortage of funds, people are going to be able to borrow and they are going to still be able to make money. And if the 
value of land comes down slightly and you've still got money in the the lending world then that's not not going to be uh, a, a time when we're going to see a lack of activity i would say yeah i think um, I, I should uh, sort of re-emphasize what i was saying from a point of view of the everything i i think will come sort of crashing down at some point but that's not yes housing might take the brunt of that but there's there's a lot of other external bigger factors that are going to contribute towards that but yeah you are spot on i mean if your cost of your mortgage is say seven percent or you know you're doing a development deal or you're buying a buy to let portfolio whatever it is if the cost of the mortgage cost of finance is say seven percent but your roi is going to be 15 percent doesn't matter you know if if, mm. if your mortgage is 100 percent but your return on investment is 200 percent it, it yeah, I think I think the thing that I find that people struggle with is that again, the last fifteen years or so, we've been so well. Take the last year out, we've been so used to abnormally low interest rates that actually even these slight movements. So I think the Bank of England rate on average since what sixteen ninety four has been about five percent hit or give or take. So actually, we're just going back to a bit of normality. But I think people are so programmed to have much lower rates that. It's maybe taking them off guard, but I, I think I think you're spot on there. That actually, the mortgage rate doesn't really matter. What's your cash flow? What's your return on investment? And if that's if that's better, then you're still in the winning position. Yeah, and one thing I would just mention to people is the loan to value covenants that lenders will put into their documentation because they'll you know usually put in something like seventy five percent loan to value. Uh, it, it can't go over, but there's also usually a clause in there that says at any point of time, the lender reserves the right to be able to value the property. So if they say if there is a bit of a dip and they decide to value it and your property has dropped 5 10% and you're at 75% loan to value already, you're not at 75% loan to value then. And it, it changes. So I don't think it's going to get to the same um, level as in 2008 when banks were potentially using this to uh, mechanically um, engineer situations so that they um, were protected. Um, but and I, I think the, the whole industry has learned from that. Um, but it's something to look out for when signing new loan facility agreements. Fair enough. That's a great, great piece of advice. I haven't seen anything else in the news that um, I, I could think of that's worth going over apart from the, the, what we've already discussed. Is there anything from your perspective when you're dealing with clients, is there anything else you've seen or noticed that uh, that's worth showing? Um, I would say the bridging rates have actually, they, they've gone up, but they're not going up as quickly as we're seeing the longer term lending rates. So we're, we're doing a, a case for somebody at the moment, a commercial uh, property and the actual commercial long-term rate is not too far off what the bridging rate is now oh, wow. so it's the, the the spread there has come right down and it's it's interesting to see that um so a lot of the time well every time you do a fixed rate you have an early repayment charge um and on the variable rates for the long term you're and the tracker rates you're seeing more early repayment charges being put in which is not the norm. Usually on a variable rate, you don't you don't have an early repayment charge. But for an extra um, 3 or 4% per annum, going onto a bridging rate does give you a lot more flexibility. Um, and it, it will cost you more. But if you're only borrowing for a, a few months, it, it could be a, um, a better solution. That's quite interesting, that. So, hmm, wow, that's, that's taken me a little bit... Uh... That's taken me back a little bit. So in effect, I think that just highlights why it's important to speak to a broker like yourself, yeah. have a chat with someone like yourself, uh, because you've, you're going to have all this access to this knowledge and you're going to be able to help out your clients like you had done in this situation. That just emphasizes that point. Yeah, and we, I mentioned the development finance tool. Going on our website and using that helps with the development, but also in the next couple of weeks, that's going to include bridging finance. And then hopefully by the end of the summer, it's going to include long-term finance as well. So customers can go on there. And, and, and you know what, just a little story. I, I was at a networking event. Um, this was two, two and a half weeks ago. And um, 
I was talking away about this development finance tool to a developer saying, oh, yeah, you know, it sounds brilliant, blah, 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 love the concept. Then another guy came and joined the conversation and he's like, oh, you're not talking about this tool. And I was like, yeah, I am. He said, oh, it's rubbish. It's awful. You don't want to use it. It got me in all sorts of problems and went on to slag it off and just really um, put a downer on it. And I said, well, tell me what happened. Tell me about the scenario. And he said, well, I went on there, typed in all my my um, data that I needed to. Um, I went on the list of all the uh, the lenders and their rates and terms and everything. I chose the cheap, cheapest lender and proceeded with that. I was like, okay, so which lender was it? And he told me the lender. And I said, oh, that that's a new lender. I know the person who set that up. They're very new to it. They were made redundant by a, a big lender and they went off and set their own thing up. And he said, yeah, but, you know, this tool did this, that and the other. And I was like, yeah, you're right. It gave you the answer. It gave you everything you asked for. But the bit you were missing was the broker to say, tell you what the background is. Um, and, uh, you know, if you look at some lenders, if you go a day over your term you get charged a five percent fee and brokers tend to know these things and using any tool any development finance or you know even insurance tool you can get a list of the criteria but if you don't know the nuances and the intricacies behind everything with that in that subject it's very hard to make an informed decision so that's why we really like this tool. And this is why we think it's going to be great for our customers because we can fill in the bits that they don't know. Whereas if they went directly onto a tool like this, it just it just wouldn't work. So yeah, l talking to a professional in the industry, I think adds an extra dimension. It, it really does. And we've always said on this podcast and when we're you know, networking, speaking to people, it's... You know, brokers are a key part of the power team. And obviously, there's a lot of different key parts to a power team. But that just highlights why you've got to, maybe dealing with your portfolio insurance, uh, finding a, a product for a, a deal you're looking to do, you've got to speak to the right professional people. So that tool, to me, sounds incredibly useful, but also use that tool in conjunction with speaking with yourself, having a chat. Like you said, you can fill in the nuances. And um it's better to do a bit of homework that way than um, just think you know best because I'd say unfortunately for this guy sounds like he um, got into it a little bit of a pickle just because he didn't add the broker element to it. Yeah and you always have to remember the saying empty vessels sound the loudest so those people that don't know what they're talking about will shout so it's um, yeah just with this sort of thing just see it's Take your own experience rather than listening to everybody. And we see it massively in the property world with all the training companies and on the, all the online forums, mm. everybody talking. I know this, I know that. And, you know, just get on, do it yourself, keep quiet and make some money. I think on that note, that's the perfect place to stop. Uh, as usual, for those listening, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, actually give us a like and press that notification bell. I will put all the necessary links to War Financial in the YouTube description with show notes on the podcast. Uh, Mark, uh, yeah, good luck with all the uh, those tools moving forward. Hopefully, you get some business from people listening to the podcast or watching this on YouTube, and uh, catch up in August. Great, thanks a lot.